Hello my friends and welcome to Open Studio D. And today my friends we'll be talking about oil brushes. All artists will tell you this is most overwhelming but most important thing to understand what brushes to use. As I mentioned in previous video, I have 250 brushes that sit in my studio. Do I use them? No. Waste of money? Absolutely. How I select those sun brushes? Very simple. I'm using them every day in my daily painting. Do we think we should start it? Yes. Okay. So let's get, let's get started. Okay. Before we start even talking about brushes, I have no affiliation with any manufacturers or any brands. All the brushes that I'm going to recommend to you, I bought myself, and this is my brush that I'm using. Choice number one is always Rosemary & Company from England. Beautiful brushes, uh, well-made and relatively inexpensive because uh, she's not selling those brushes through distributors, it's direct sales. That's why she's keeping all the brushes at kind of low cost. but relatively relatively low cost choice number two is silver brushes and i'm using only bristle uh the cold grand prix uh, series and choice number three is creative marks from germany i have some other brushes um randomly from different brands but um, they normally they sit in my jug and i'm not using them so brush number one Brush number one is for underpainting. So what is underpainting? Underpainting is the first layer of oil paint with a lot of medium to cover your canvas. So basically what you do, you take oil with a lot of medium, uh, underpainting medium, and you apply your first layer using this brush, underpainting brush. Uh, you, what you're trying to do, you're trying to cover the canvas and trying to read off the white color. Make sure you have shapes, you're defining the shapes and you're defining the uh, color um, harmony on your canvas. And for underpainting, my to-go brush is this. Long flat, as you can see, and this is Ivory Series. Ivory Series is, is equivalent to bristle, kind of replacement for bristle brushes. Or you can have bristle brush, one inch, and you can see both brushes are really fat, so they hold a lot, they hold a lot of oil inside the core. Brush number two. Brush number two is a very interesting brush. And lately, uh, for the past three years, this is my probably number one brush in my studio. And this brush is a fan brush. <laughs> fan brush, yes. I'm using fan brush when I'm drawing, make a drawing, and I'll tell you why. Because if you're using something like this, pointing, round pointing brush and making drawings on your canvas, you're making sharp edges, or sharp lines of the subject and your eyes, your mind, will go to that sharpness and you're done, basically. Uh, so you have to break it. Why to go to sharpness, to details, uh, and then break it if you can start with loose. So I'm using this brush as my loose uh, drawing on my canvas. So instead of making sharp edges, so basically what I do, I, I will start drawing and then I will turn my brush, making shapes and making definition of or defining the shapes, but not actually drawing them. So this is first use of this brush. And the second use of a brush, when I finish my underpainting uh, with a big brush, I need to remove the sharpness or remove the edges because sharp edges are the killers. You want to remove it. You want to make sure your shapes are defined but blended. So what I use when my underpainting is done, I will basically will come and I will start blending. I will start blending different directions and you probably saw it on my demos and you will see it on part two of this video. I will actually show how to use each category of the brush that I'm gonna show today. So basically I'm blending my, my painting, underpainting, and I'm removing sharp edges. So this is the reason I'm using this fan brush, brush number two. I would probably recommend this Rosemary, Rosemary & Company brush. I love this brush. Don't go smaller than uh, four, uh, because you, again, you will start tightening your, your painting. I would even recommend maybe number six. So four or six. So a fan brush number four or six from, I mean, you can, you can choose any company, any brands, but this is what I'm using daily. And this is Rosemary & Company number four fan brush. Brush number three. Brush number three is actually for second layer of your oil, you know, when you're applying oil in your canvas. So when you do your underpainting, then you take a fan brush and you break those hard edges and remove the sharpness, and then you jump on applying second layer of oil. I would recommend a little bit smaller brush than underpainting. You remember underpainting is about inch, 
So this, the second layer or brush number three will be a smaller brush number four. I'm using number four from Rosemary and Company, uh, same ivory series, number four, long flat, or, and I love these brushes as well, this is silver, uh, series Grand Prix, and this is bristle filbert. I love this brush because it's not really sharp edges because you know this is a bristle and and it holds ton and ton of oil i just love these brushes number four or number six sil uh, synthetic replacement of bristle and good replacement of bristle is ivory uh, series from rosemary number four or six or silver grand prix number four or six filber uh, bristle brush brush number four now very important point to understand if you look at the canvas and you apply your underpainting and underpainting is going to dry relatively fast using a lot of uh, underpainting medium then you put a first layer a little bit heavier of your pa oil paint and then you're about to put the second layer now keep in mind if you use hard brushes when you put second layer, it's gonna lift what we call lifting the previous or under painting. You're gonna lift the paint and paint that you just apply as a first layer and you're gonna make a mud. It's gonna mix, it's gonna mix together and it's it's muddy, very muddy. So what do you have to do? You apply the first layer and then you're about to put the second layer. You have to use softer brush to make sure that when you're applying this second layer, it's not lifting first the previous layer. So you have to use soft brushes. For the soft brushes, I would recommend, this is what I'm using, and I love these brushes. The size is a little bit smaller, even though number is actually greater on the Rosemary's brush, but actually size of the brush should be a little bit smaller, and it should be very soft. By soft, I mean the spring of the brush, when you put, you know, you put your hand and you start to push it against your hand, you feel it's like you're not applying a lot. So for example, if I take bristle brush, this is a bristle brush. I, I'm applying a little bit more pressure. So spring is heavier. So I have to apply a little bit more pressure to, to bend it kind of. So, but this is what we call spring. On a soft brushes, if I do this with a soft brushes, I do not apply any pressure and it's just bending right away. What that means? When I apply second layer, I'm not, because of the spring is very soft, it's not gonna lift the first layer. So I'm applying a second layer, layer on top of the first layer and you need to have soft brushes. For the soft brushes, I would recommend, and there's a bunch of synthetic uh, brushes, uh, soft brushes. You can buy it from Creative Marks, from Bleak, from... Uh, there's a tons and tons of soft brushes, but I would recommend what I'm using. And I tested these brushes for years. For soft brushes, I would re recommend Rosemary & Company uh, Eclipse. Uh, this is kind of mongoose. Uh, replacement. Uh, the spring is very soft, so when you're applying the second layer, you're not going to lift. Again, you can, of course, you can lift this first layer if you dig inside. But if you're applying really softly, it's not gonna lift the first layer. So I would recommend number 10 or smaller. This is probably quarter inch uh, in size if you just tape measure. Um, but this is number 10. I'm using actually two, um, two sizes. Uh, this is number 10 and I'm using another brush and I'm using this is number six. As you can see, this is a little bit bigger, this is a little bit smaller. So this is brush number four. Brush number five. So brush number five is detail brush, detailing and fine details. And I would normally recommend very, very soft brush. And again, round brushes, crazy on numbers. You can get number two, number two, number two from different brands and they will be completely like in different sizes. So don't go by those numbers again. Go by actual size. Find the sizes on the manufacturer sides and go by size. I would recommend something not really tiny, tiny like this, like a really tiny small brush, but some bigger so it will hold a little bit more uh, oil. Two brushes that I'm using constantly. One is Eclipse by Rosemary, Rosemary & Company, Eclipse series, and this is size number four, very soft. The spring is very, very soft, it holds a lot of oil tip of the brush. And this this is problem with round brushes. Sometimes you buy the brush and then you use several times and tip is gone. Uh, and I, I can show you like something like this. Tip is completely gone. 
and this was something like this with a nice tip. So you have to, you know, probably round brushes you will be using or replacing more often, but with a nice tip, also, you know, kind of fat, so it will hold oil paint and very, very soft. So this is basically for fine details. So like that, that's uh, maybe small lines or a small touch. I'm not using this brush for painting big surfaces, it's just small touches. I love this brush by Creative Marks from Germany. This is a soft brush that I love. The softness and spring on this brush is just un unbelievable. It has a point when you load the oil onto this brush. Uh, very pointy, uh, very soft, hold a lot of um, a lot of paint. This is actually uh, Kalinsky Mimic uh, number four. So I would recommend this brush. You can find those round brushes from other brands, not necessarily this, but make sure it's soft. Make sure it's pointy and make sure it's kind of fat, uh, not too small, because you need to have a lot of oil, especially, especially for fine tuning. You have only, only one touch on your painting. So make sure it can hold the, the paint, the amount of paint. Finally, brush number six is your signature brush. If you finish your painting and you want to put the signature, you need to have this brush because you won't be able to use any of, of the brushes that we talk about. Uh, this is liner brush. So it's a very, very pointy and long brush. I'm using Creative Marks. You can use, actually, this is not Creative Mark. This is Blick. Again, liners, you can, any synthetic soft liners, they will do the work. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money or get something really expensive. So any liners brush will work. This is brush number six, just final signature brush. So my friends, let's finalize. The six brushes that I would recommend for you to have in your studio, or if you're starting oil painting, learning oil paint, those six brushes I would recommend to purchase to start oil painting. So brush number one is underpainting brush bristle or replacement, synthetic replacement of bristle. Make sure it's heavy or white or big, whatever you call it. Uh, I call it one inch. Uh, this is Rosemary and, Bra Rosemary and Company uh, number 10, long ivory. And I'll put all the brushes in the description. So this is brush number one, underpainting brush. Brush number two is a fan brush right here. That's a fan brush to smooth your edges, remove the hard edges, remove the sharpness and work on the, on finalizing your underpainting. So brush number two is a fan brush. This brush is Rosemary & Company number four Eclipse fan brush. Brush number three is for your first layer of your oil paint on your canvas. And I would recommend, it's a smaller brush, uh, twice smaller than your underpainting brush. I would recommend Rosemary & Company Ivory Long Filbert or Flat. Brush number four is for second layer of your oil paint, and this should be soft brush. Make sure you're not lifting, what we call lifting the previous layer of oil paint if it's not 100% dry. So for this, you need soft brush, and I would recommend something like, like Rosemary and Company Eclipse Filbert number, this is number eight. So you can use number eight, you can use number probably up to 10 or lower, to, I mean smaller to number six, but not smaller than that. And this will be your brush for second layer. And then finally, brush number five is your round brush for fine tuning. I would recommend round brush, not small, not big. Uh, this is by Rosemary & Company Eclipse round brush number four. So round brush number four. You can use this or any other round brush. Make sure it's a soft, make sure you're not lifting your previous layers. Brush number six, I just put this on a list of uh, recommended brushes because this is the signature brush and this is liner. Just long liner brush. They normally long, it's not, it's kind of round, but they call it liner because it's a very long. Uh, this is just for signature, just to put your signature. Sometimes I'm using this brush if I need just tiny dots uh, on the water. So I'm actually using this brush, I will load and just put dots. So this is your fine tune or signature brush. And this is it. This is your six brushes that I would recommend uh, for oil painting in your studio or if you start, if you're beginner get those brushes. All these brushes will be in description below. So this is a brush I would 
recommend. Thank you for watching this video. Actually, I forgot to mention that this video is part number one. I'm actually working on video part number two of the same video where I will actually show all these six brushes how I'm using on a canvas. Kind of a demo, uh, but specifically for brushes, how I'm using these six brushes. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like, because a lot of good stuff is coming. Also, if you are already subscribed, thank you very much for supporting my channel, and I will see you next week.